Hey, welcome to the Quilted Gardener. It's been a while since I've done a video. Um, I bought a microphone. Doesn't work. Um, so that'll be going back tomorrow. Um, so I'm starting seeds. <coughs> Excuse me. And as you can see, I am inside today. The sun was out, so the greenhouse was like 92 when I went out there. Um, and since, you know, then it started snowing again. You can't tell behind me because that window is so bright. Um, but I'm sitting here in front of a tub full of Quar and Pro Mix. And I'll get to the Pro Mix in a bit. Um, that's more like a potting soil, top off soil. So um, I'm sitting here breaking up some clumps while I'm talking. Um, but when I start my vegetable seeds, I start them in just Quar only. Um, I don't want any additives to them because their roots are a little more sensitive than what flower um, seeds are. So um, last year I did everything in Quar and my flowers were a little funky. Like my marigolds were super, super tall and they shouldn't have been. A um, few other things I planted didn't do very well. So um, now I have, what, salvia, lavender, hyssop um, right here's my hyssop um, it's getting up potted today um, some stock purple iron stock which I have more of that to start today too um, over there in my seed books um, and I've lost the remote to my iPad again um, I'll find it in some stupid place I'm sure it might be in the pocket of something I was wearing who knows uh, so you're going to see me moving around, um, and you know I don't edit my videos to make them all fancy and pretty and put music and blah, 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 because that drives me nuts. Um, so it actually feels pretty good to be sitting here with my fingers and hands in the dirt. Um, now, I bought the ProMix yesterday, um, and it was outside, so the center of it is frozen, so I'm hoping for it to thaw out here pretty soon. Um, the top part was okay. But I got a big clump of it that was frozen, and holy crap, um, it was very cold. So I'm sitting here picking out some sticks. Um, but back to the quar issue, it, it really worked really great for my vegetables, like tomatoes, peppers, cabbage. Um, what else did I have last year? Spinach, lettuce, things like that. It worked really good for that. Um, not so much for my flowers. My flowers were just bleh. Um, I mean, once they got in the ground, they were fine, but you know, I put some extra soil, um, I believe it was a cow manure compost mix, um, in the hole when I planted them. So this time, you know, other than what I've got started out there now, um, which is not growing super fast, um, other than the hyssop, but hyssop is very, very easy to grow. Um, it's actually almost time for it to be pinched um, but I'm going to wait about a week after, until after, you know, transplanting it before I do that. So, knock some of this dirt off my hands here. And grab my lid to use as a little table. Um, I am going to be doing another video today, um, Seed Starting 101. Because um, I had some people ask me to walk through the process of how seeds are started. Um, because they've never done it before, so I will be doing that. So, um, yesterday, I had to go and um, drop some packages off at DSL, because um, they were going to Australia. And so I was right there at Menards, and I had a really good return check. So. Um, I went and picked up a bunch of stuff while I was out, and I don't have to go out again. Um, let's see here. I could have swore I had more of those gonzias. Ah, maybe down here. Um, Gazania. It's a cross between a zinnia and something else. Um, I'm thinking Gerber Daisy, maybe? And that's kind of what it looks like. Um, but I thought I bought more than one pack of them, and apparently I didn't. Ah, that sucks. Um, oh, 
there's the second one. So, um, some things that I've never grown before, obviously, is the Gazzani um, Sunshine Mix. Um, I put this up on the page earlier. So these bloom in the summer. It takes um, 7 to 14 days for them to germinate. And they want to be in fine soil. You only barely cover them. Um, the flowers open during the day and then they close at night. So, and they do well in dry heat. So for those of you in the south, this is a good one to get. It's by Burpee. Um, I didn't pay $2.79 for them. Menards had them like a dollar or something like that. Um, and I actually, I wish I would have gotten more of those. Um, so I've never grown those before. Um, Alberita Whitewell Jim. Um, I, I, I know you guys are noticing that I like purple flowers. Um, this one is a perennial, and it, it's good for um, rock gardens and things like that. You start them, um, it says to start them outside in the spring in a sunny area after frost or in late summer, 12 weeks before ground freezes. Um, you cover them with fine soil, they bloom in the spring, and then they keep, you know, as you keep um, up on them, like deadheading them and things like that, they'll keep blooming throughout the summer. Um, and I've never grown this before, so that should be interesting. Um, a list of them I have grown before, but this is just a different color. It's called Ro Royal Carpet. Um, I believe I have yellow also. Um, so this one is, you know, for bedding, edges, and containers. It takes eight to 10 days for it to germinate. Um, these only get three inches tall. So um, you barely cover this with um, fine soil also, but you do start this inside. Um, or you can sow it outside. It does grow pretty quick. I'm starting it inside this year. So, um, the Lufa Gourd I've never grown before either. So, I only got one package of these. Um, you plant these like eight feet apart, but I'm going to put them on, um, a, what do you call it, a cow panel trellis. So, you can actually eat these before they turn into a loofah. So, they take 120 days to harvest as a loofah, but you can eat the squash gourd um, before it becomes a loofah, and it's very sweet, apparently. So, last year I did have delphinium. Um, of course, I went with the blue um, and purple mix. Last year I just had the fairy ice ones, um, and I only had a few of them. And I did not mark my pot, so I didn't know what I had. Um, so these take three weeks to a month before they emerge. Um, and I'll do a video specifically on starting these um, because they do have a different way to be done. So, but of course, you know, blue and purple, my thing. Uh, Marigold Mission Giant Yellow, I have never seen before. Um, so I did get a couple packs of these. I don't know how many seeds are in here, but this is what it looks like. I um, mean, that's a marigold. And I companion plant marigolds. Um, and this year I will remember to um, pinch back my centers um, so I don't get big, huge, tall plants like I had last year, which wasn't bad, but they really didn't work for companion planting by the tomatoes and stuff like that. So, um... And they're just a standard looking seed um, of a marigold. And unfortunately, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so, uh, whoops, there's not a ton in the packet, which sucks. Um, I don't know where that went. I was gonna lick my thumb to see if I can make it stick, but my thumb is covered in dirt and I really don't wanna eat dirt. So this will be interesting to see. Um, these will go in my perennial beds to help um, control bugs, not you know in the garden um, with the tomatoes. But I've never seen that variety before. And then I got the key lime marigold, um, so they're green. And um, again, these take seven to 14 days to germinate. Um, you plant them about six inches apart 
once you put them outside, these do get two to three foot tall. Um, it takes 65 days for them to bloom. Um, but I'm gonna pinch these back and see if I can make them bush more rather than grow up. Um, and these I did get as companion plants for the tomatoes. And then just uh, um, the Cracker Jack mixed, which is the orange and yellow. Um, standard ones you find at the uh, nursery. And these definitely go in the garden. Um, they get up to two foot tall. Um, takes five to seven days for these to germinate. So these will be planted, oh, it says four to six weeks before last frost. And our last frost is mid-May. So mid-May to April mid to March mid. Um, I may go ahead and start these so that I have good plants to put out because I'm late on some stuff. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and start these and these are going to get started in flats, not my little um, four inch pots, these um, using some leftover from last year. Um, I did just, oops, wrong thing, somewhere. Um, I ordered four inch pots and they came with cloches, um, which is really awesome. They don't stay on the pot very well when you're trying to germinate, just so you know. There's 30 of them for $9.99, but here's the cloche. It um, has the holes in the top of it and it just sits, you know, it actually fits on this cup too, so I'll just show you. It just sits right on top. Um, but like if you were to plant your stuff outside and all of a sudden, you know, with our freaky weather, you got um, frost coming, this could go right over your short plant and it would protect it very, very well. So I have like 90 or 120 of these. So should anything go bonkers with the weather, you know, um, since climate change isn't real, um, I have those to cover my plants up to protect them. And then my next happy, happy, joy, joy um, seed is Cape Daisies. One of my favorite um, is also called Osseo, oh, Osseospermum um, Eglanus. And it's a white to lavender with a purple center daisy. Um, they're African. These take 10 to 20 days to germinate. They want full sun. Um, and they get about 12 to 18 inches tall. And again, you know, they want to be kept moist, but shallowly wet when you're germinating them. So I got a few packs of those. Um, let's see. Or maybe not. Uh, I haven't opened this pack yet. And I bought some daisy seeds, Shasta daisy seeds, back in December. Um, no idea where they went. I thought maybe they were out in the greenhouse, but I haven't found them yet. And I've moved a lot of stuff out there. So, um, they're not in there. And which the Cape Daisy was with them too. And I thought I had more than one pack of them, but I don't. So, you know, my other favorite is the Alaska Shasta daisy. Um, and I have four, five... six packs of these seeds um, is how much I like them because they're going to be put in a, you know, the four inch pot to start and then they'll go into a six inch pot and I'm going to overseed basically like six seeds per pot. So they have nice sized fat plants when I put them out. Um, these are also full sun, 15 to 21 days for germination, start six to eight weeks before your last frost inside or you can try and start them outside. I did not have the greatest luck last year with doing that. Um, I did save some seeds, but that's in my wildflower mix, um, which will go on the other side of the house, on the other side of the chicken coop where the beehives are going. So um, one of my favorite flowers, um, just because, I don't know, they're happy. And then I have the English daisy. I've never grown these either. And it's like the seeds feel pretty small. Um, again, start them six to eight weeks before. I'm a little early, but in Michigan, we could have 
our last days of winter in April or we could have our last days of winter in June. So as long as I have the greenhouse, they'll be good. I can always up pot them. Um, these take about three weeks to germinate. Um, they look like bachelor buttons to me, but they're not. Um, the next one is a paper daisy and I've never grown these before. They look like star fl uh, straw flowers to me. Um, these are three weeks also. Um, the more you cut them back, the more they bloom is a good thing with that. So apparently it's a good cut flower, even though I don't really do that. Um, and then my last one is the yellow daisy, a buttercup type thing. Uh, 10 to 14 days, um, partial shade. So um, I've got to remember that, that these don't like direct sun. So they can actually go in my perennial garden on the middle perimeter to where they get partial sun. Um, of course, you know, butterfly weed, this is the... Um, apricot is what this one is. Um, these you have to pre-chill for 24 to 48 hours before you plant them. Um, it's a perennial, 10 to 21 days for germination. Um, they mature and bloom, it says 365 days to bloom. So the first year they're planted, they don't bloom. Just so you know that when, when you plant your butterfly bush, it does, or not butterfly bush, butterfly weed, um, it does not bloom the first year. Um, I have a few others that are that way. Um, lupines are that way, columbine is that way. Um, I have another one and I can't think right now. But just, you know, don't think it, it didn't work. It's just that it takes them 365 days to build the energy they need to create flowers. So I'm gonna see if I stop looking to the side by moving this this way, maybe. Uh -uh. Um, Nesterium, I got the Jewel Tone Mix. I planted this last year, but I direct seeded it. It didn't work good. So um, these get planted at a half inch and they take 65 days to bloom. They get 10 to 12 inches. Um, and again, you know, I reading this package just now, I think I know why it didn't work last year. It says to, in order to aid in germination, rub the seed with a nail file. I did not do that. I know for a fact I did not do that. So I'll make sure I do that this time. Um, put those to the side because that has special instructions. So, um, and baby's breath. I have grown this before, um, not abundantly, but again, 365 days to bloom. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, I have some really good fish fertilizer that tends to force things to grow like, you know, like they shouldn't. And then of course my zinnias. I got the thumbelinas, the purple prints, the California Giants, the Luminoso, which is you know a bubblegum pink, and Canary Bird, which is yellow. Um, these take five to seven days to germinate. These get, <clears throat> um, they can get up to three foot tall, um, depending on which color. Um, these are 12, these are 18, 18, 18 to 36 on the pink and 18. So these are super easy to grow by just throwing them on the ground, covering up a little dirt. Um, the reason I plant so many of these is for bees and butterflies. Monarchs really like these too. So um, right along with the butterfly weed, I do have butterfly bush out in the greenhouse. I think four of them have sprouted so far. Um, so I'm hoping for more, fingers crossed. And then moving on, um, Snapdragons, I got the red and white mix. Um, these I do a broadcast germination, which means I take a tray, one of these that doesn't have holes in it, and I fill it up three quarters of the way with the soil and I wet it. Um, and then broadcast this over like that by sprinkling it. Um, I'm thinking you can probably see. These are like the size of, oops, poppy seeds. 
so they're super, super fine. Um, I don't even know how many's in this packet. Um, they came from the same company that my lavender did, and I'll do a, a lavender update this week too. Um, they're doing quite well. I'm just about ready to uh, pot those. Um, so I'm excited about those. Um, these are six to eight weeks. These have to be chilled also. Um, what other one needed to be chilled? I can't remember. Butterfly weed, I believe. No. I had another one that has to be chilled. Uh, I'll find it. So that goes in that pile of specialties. Um, and then the crazy mixture sunflowers. Um, all different colors. There's a thousand seed there. Um, these are direct so I've tried transplanting from germination indoors. It did not work was not good um, just so you know um, which of course you know for the chickens the birds etc um, and then more salvia the sapphire blue um, I have a tray out there and this one's a little different from what I have so this is the plant from this one my other one is um, See if I grabbed. No, I thought I had some left over. Um, I'll look through here real quick. Um, I'm gonna tell you if you, even if you don't order from Johnny's, um, sign up for their catalog. Um, oh, Salvia. Um, their catalog is amazing, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute here. Um, I'm going to tell you, I did order seeds from here, and I wasn't really happy because you don't get a lot. Um, okay, so I have the Victoria Blue um, already started, which is this one right here. Uh, so, and it has more of a sage-like leaf to it, um, but with the Johnny's catalog... In the begin, like this is tomatoes and husk cherries. Um, when you first start the chapter, it has everything you need to do right here. Tells you everything. Um, same, you know, everything that's in here. Um, like all the tomatoes are the same, obviously, and then potatoes and pumpkins and gourds and, but it gives you all the information you need, and they send this to you for free. I've gotten two this year. Um, so one's out in the greenhouse and one's inside. Um, so just sign up for their catalog to be sent to you. Um, and, and when you are ordering, check the number of seeds because I did not. Um, I paid like four bucks for one pack of seeds and it had 10 in there. Um, and they were tomatoes. So I wasn't happy about that. Um, and then this is hyssop. I was, th what's, I told you I needed to up pot. This will be succession planted. So this is what it looks like. It's amazing for bees. Um, to bring them in, but it keeps mosquitoes away too. So um, I think um, hummingbirds like this too. Um, these do need light to germinate, so they need to go into your grow light or in a window, um, however you do it. Um, they do not like hard compact soil, so no clay soil on these. Um, I have dirt in my mouth. Um, so, you know, the salvias are a sage. I learned something the other night um, that just absolutely blew my mind. Apparently, kids these days take these leaves and they smoke them because it has a hallucinogenic effect. Um, the salvia, not regular sage. Um, I never knew that. So, this is 1,600 seeds. Um, they come in a foil lined pack like this. Um, and I think I paid $4.99 for them on Amazon. And I've had really good seed needs, had really good luck with this company. Um, everything from seed needs that I have planted um, has done very well so far. Um, along with that organic company for the lavender. Um, and then of course I have, you know, cabbage. And then 
Um, this is Larkspur. I have another pack of Larkspur over there that needs to be started. I think this one's all blue. No, this is a mixed color. Um, so this company is Ilsa's or Isla's Garden Seeds, and they're from, you know the U.S. I buy my seeds from the U.S. Um, Echinacea. I have a tray started. It's doing okay. Echinacea is you know the germination rate's not great, but it does take um, three weeks, and today is what the I want to say the 19th. Um, so, actually, I guess I did pretty good so far because I planted those on the 10th and I've got about, I want to say 50 or so. But I did that broadcast spread. Um, these are going to get put into the little, do I have any in here? Um, I bought some trays, 72 plug trays. And as you can see, they're short. I did not buy the tray that they go down into. Um, so I've had to cut these apart and I cut all of this stuff off. Um, oh, the air compressor just kicked on. And I've had to cut the end of it off so it fits down in one of those trays. Um, so I have a bunch of these cutoffs that I'm gonna use for this echinacea to see how well it does. Um, Maybe they get that. No, that was eggplant. Um, and then I have some more chives to start. Um, I was watching Impatient Gardener on YouTube, and I've never even thought of this idea before. Um, but she did an entire like hedgerow out of chives. It's the coolest looking thing because you know chives bloom. Um, these bloom white. And then the ones I have started bloom purple, and I think I have some other ones um, that are kind of a lavender color. Um, so I'm gonna try that this year, see how that goes. Um, so that's the seed haul. And next I'll be doing Seed Starting 101. So, catch you later.